Hi everyone, welcome back. So we've been talking about the Havoc or Henkel alternative view of Koopman analysis and how you can use that to get a data-driven decomposition of chaotic dynamics into a linear system with intermittent forcing. Um, so this is just a recap of this, this Havoc model. You uh, have your system, you measure data, you build a Hankel matrix and eigen time delay coordinates using the singular value decomposition. And you can build a linear regression model um, in those time delay coordinates. Pretty cool. So what I'm going to tell you about right now in this little uh, short video is we're going to dive deeper into the structure of this regression model because it is super cool. And um, I really want to show, show you what it looks like. So for the Lorentz data, this is actually the, the model that we get out. This is you know, MATLAB. I'm plotting the, the coefficients. Um, you know, the color it indicates the coefficient of this model. So this is my A matrix, my B matrix of my linear havoc model for Lorentz. Um, and this is very cool. Lots of neat structure here. So a couple of things you notice right off the bat, it's sparse and it's off diagonal. Okay, so most of the entries are zero. The only ones that are non-zero are these off diagonal entries. Uh, and they come in uh, equal opposite pairs, right? So this is kind of anti-symmetric. If you have positive here, you have negative here, and so on and so forth. Very cool. Um, we actually discovered this Havoc framework when applying the uh, sparse identification of nonlinear dynamics, or SINDI algorithm, to the Lorentz system in time delay coordinates. That's in this paper here. And what we realized was even if you give, so this is a regression model. Even if I allow my regression the possibility of having nonlinear interaction terms, so, you know, uh, polynomial nonlinearities of these V, these v uh, states, the Cindy method picks out as the most parsimonious model this linear, sparse, highly structured model. So even if you give it the possibility of, of higher order nonlinear terms, this is the most parsimonious model. And that got us thinking about connections with Koopman operators and time delays and all of these, these neat ideas. Um, but really, there's beautiful structure here. So other things that I find fascinating about this um, is that the coefficients here are nearly integer multiples of the number 5, which is fascinating. So this might be 4.9 and negative 4.9, you know, 9.9 and negative 9.9, 14.9 and negative 14.9. They're really close to integer multiples, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and so on and so forth. Very close, like eerily similar. Um, and they also have this interesting alternating pattern where if I look at this lower diagonal term, you have positive, 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 negative, positive, 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 negative, positive, positive, negative, positive. So four, then one, then three, then one, then two, then one, then one. I mean, this could be a coincidence, maybe. Uh, very cool. So this got us thinking, and this is just kind of a fun aside. It's got us thinking, why don't we try to take this Lorentz Havoc model and actually cook up our own model? So this is a model I built in MATLAB where I've manually enforced this, um, this symmetry. And I've also enforced that these are exact integer multiples of 5. So the coefficients are 5, 10, 15, 20, minus 25, 30, 35, 40, minus 45, and so on and so forth. So this is a model that is inspired by the Lorentz Havoc model. But I just cooked this up from scratch, OK? Just as a state space system in MATLAB. And what I do is I take that forcing signal, V15, measured from the real Lorentz system, and I force this neighboring system with that, with that input. And this is the result. So in white, you have the real Lorentz system. And in red, you have this neighboring integer-valued system uh, with, the, with the same Lorentz forcing. And this is just. For me, this is kind of mind-blowing. You have this system. There's no reason to think that you can get Lorentz dynamics from this highly structured integer dynamical system linear model. Just nuts, right? But if you force this with the, the forcing that Lorentz is experiencing, you get beautifully the attractor switching, the dynamics on the attractor. I mean, it's not perfect, which 
but it's way better than I would have expected. It's pretty amazing what you capture of the real Lorentz system from this highly idealized integer structured model. So not sure what the connection is. Honestly, couldn't tell you how to interpret the fact that they're integer valued, that there is this alternating structure, uh, but I just had to share it because it's, it's really cool. All right, uh, thank you very much.